going on, Jerome? So the NFL draft is still a week away, but it's getting close. Uh, and also this time of year, Daniel Jeremiah, NFL draft expert, former NFL scout, uh, does his annual uh, conference call and basically – just gets pelted with questions by media jabronis for you know, two, two and a half hours, and he answers all the questions. I get some great insight from one of the best in the business, and DJ uh, talked extensively about the Minnesota Fighting Vikings, and uh, this is uh, an excerpt from NFL.com. Eric Edholm, formerly of Yahoo! 2024 NFL Draft, blah, 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 blah. Uh, number four, where will J.J. McCarthy land? Uh, the buzz around McCarthy has driven one of the biggest and most fascinating storylines of the pre-draft cycle with the Michigan quarterback rising to the point where he's being mentioned with the top passers in the entire class or close to them anyway. Jeremiah believes the hype is real. So there's a lot of concerns that the, the J.J. McCarthy hype is just Will Levis 2.0, right? So we've we, we gone back through, and a lot of Will, he, Will Levis hype was – anonymous sources and uh, uh, really it was the media being driven to it because there, there wasn't a consensus number one quarterback last year people were questioning Strout's t- uh you know I- iq testing numbers which is stupid uh as well as uh you know bryce young is four foot tall and uh anthony richardson was uh seen as raw and levis is like oh let's just have a fourth quarterback in there uh, he's from kentucky he's got a big time arm formula penn state he, he puts mayonnaise in his coffee or w- whatever I'm sure he'll be fine, right? Uh, but w- with McCarthy, it's divided because you haven't seen it on the field necessarily. Uh, he was in a very controlled environment in Michigan, and did they do that because they didn't trust him, or was he just a cog in the machine? But also at the end of the day, all he did was win, 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 no matter what. Mm. Uh, Jeremiah believes the hype is real, at least in terms of team's interest, which has ramped up significantly since uh, the NFL scouting combine and Michigan's pro day. At the end of the day, Jeremiah doesn't think McCarthy will last very long Thursday. Mm. Uh, if you tell me that J.J. McCarthy goes beyond the 12th pick, I'll, I'll be shocked, he, he said. And you know, that's, I feel like it's a pretty safe bet. All right, so at 12, you have the Broncos, 11, you have the Vikings, and I mean, some, some other various teams could be in on McCarthy. I mean, maybe even the Falcons. Probably not, since they gave Kirk uh, 2.5 uh, years uh, fully guaranteed on his deal. But the Giants at six, certainly. The Patriots at three. The Commies at two. I mean, all all options are on the table. Plus, don't even don't rule out trade outs. I mean, it's possible that the Raiders or uh, another team, TBD, could get into the top 12 and take J.J. McCarthy. In fact, I would actually wager a significant uh, amount of jelly beans uh, if I was a gambling man that J- McCarthy doesn't get out of the top six. Like either the Giants take him at six or a team trades up to three, four, five and goes goes and gets him. Hmm. Uh, it continues. Uh, 12 is where the Broncos pick. I just said that. One spot ahead of them, number 11 overall, the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, they are two teams Jeremiah mentioned uh, when he was asked who was most connected to McCarthy. And, of course, stupid-ass Sean Payton. I mean, he's been effusive in his praise for McCarthy. And part of me just wants McCarthy so that uh, that Peyton doesn't get him. Douche. 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 Any excuse. Any excuse to use that clip. Hmm. The Vikings are in a better position to move up, owning two first-round selections, including the number 23 pick, uh, nine picks total. Uh, Denver owns eight selections, but six of them come after the 120th pick. The Broncos also lack a second-rounder this year. Uh, McCarthy might even be in play in the top five overall, depending on how aggressive the quarterback needy team gets, uh, and the Vikings likely will have the better shot of getting him with a stronger supply of ammunition. Everything is on the table. Uh, Jeremiah said whether or not that's a trade up to 4-5, uh, whether that's a trade trade up a couple of spots or whether those teams stand pat. I think all options are in play and it it is distinctly possible. Basically it comes down to what do people think the giants are going to do? And I think the most likely scenario is McCarthy is the fourth quarterback and Williams is going to be one all likelihood and Daniels may or may Daniels, whichever one. And maybe the Patriots stick and pick and take may or Daniels and the Vikings don't get a trade up to three. That's fine. Uh, so McCarthy could take a tumble, and a team could trade up to four or five to get ahead of the Giants, or they could gamble to see to call the Giants bluff. And, and the Giants are uh, the highly questionable what, what they're going to do. They could go quarterback, they could go offensive line, they could go wide receiver, they could go corner, they could go a lot of different directions, right? Uh, and if McCarthy gets by six, I mean, 
there, there could be a trade up to seven, eight, maybe even nine. Uh, if the bears uh, want to pass on a Dunze and uh, improve on their uh, four draft picks of this year. Uh, but I don't know, like, like things get a little bit dicey a- after that. Cause I mean, uh, if the Vikings take McCarthy, I don't think that they'll just stick and pick at 11. I think that it would behoove them to move because otherwise the Broncos and the Raiders could jump them. I, I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, and then he finished up. Uh, Jeremiah also believes that out of all the teams, most rumored to be in the quarterback business this draft, the Vikings present the best chance for a rookie quarterback to succeed early on. Woo-woo. Love it, man, because Kevin O'Connell uh, will treat you nice. Uh, Cause you, the rookie quarterback TBD is like a little baby. Where Jaron Hall, last year fifth round pick at twenty five years old, he was kind of like adopting a kid who's fourteen. Or actually, so the wife and I have talked about adopting, uh, and we we don't want like an infant. Well, because I was adopted, right? And also, I think if you're an adopted kid, you get preference when you're adopting other kids. I. I don't know. I may have just made that up. doesn't matter. But uh, so the wife says, like, after three kids, we're, we're done. So mm, I, I don't want to push out anymore. But she, she would, is open to the idea of adoption. Now, can I just adopt like a 24 year old who is already through his master's and already has a damn good job and do, doesn't ask to borrow money and we see him and his uh, fiance uh, on Christmas and Thanksgiving and uh, over the summer we'll go to the lake. C- can we just have that? That's what we want. So if you're a 24 year old who's engaged and has a master's or MBA and already has a good job and is debt free and isn't going to ask to borrow money, holla at me. <laughs> That's it, man. That's it. But what the hell are we talking about? Oh, Jaron Hall is old. That was the entire premise. <laughs> I would say if you gave truth serum to the uh, so this is for the Jory Epstein quote from earlier. Uh, if uh, I would say if you gave truth serum to the quarterbacks and the agents of all the top guys, every single one of them would say they would love nothing more than to go to the Minnesota Vikings. The new man on the Minnesota Vikings, Jeremiah said, that would be the number one choice of all these teams that are quarterback teams. That is by far the best landing spot for any quarterbacks to go into. It's all set up from the things that we talked about. Three P's. Play caller, protection, playmakers, check, check, check. Jeremiah believes having Sam Darnold also helps the Vikings in the sense that they won't need to rush a rookie quarterback into the lineup. Uh, in his mind, it's a spot that is set up to help whichever quarterback uh, ends up in Minnesota succeed. And that that's the thing. That's the thing about it, too, is no matter who it is, whether it's Daniels, whether it's May, whether it's McCarthy, whether it's Penix, whether it's Nix, whether it's Rattler, whether it's Pratt, whether it's Hartman, whether it's Travis, whether it's uh, Milton, whether whether it's Slovis, whether it, whoever the hell is going to be, they are going to be in a perfect spot to succeed. Perfect. Because there's zero goose egg, D'Angelo Russell pressure. Even if the Vikings trade up three ones for you, if you don't see the field in, in any meaningful capacity outside of garbage time, it's not a big deal because the Vikings are a young team. They're set up for success. Jefferson, Addison, Hawkinson, Darisaw, O'Neal, A.A. Ron Jones, Ty Chandler. That defense is going to be fantastic. Offensive minded head coach, Josh McCown, indoor stadium, blah, blah, blah. All that talk. Don't need to start. Darnold could, could pan out as well. So whoever ends up here ends up in a great spot. And you certainly cannot say that about all the other teams. Now, not to poo-poo other teams, but they're drafting towards the top of the draft for a reason. Washington has a lot of issues. I, I also don't trust Cliff Kingsbury. I also don't trust Dan Quinn. I also don't trust new ownership. And other than that, I think that Washington is in a really good spot. New England, the cupboard is bare. Like I, I, I don't care what Elliot Wolf says. They are deficient at too many areas, especially on offense. And we, we said, if May or McCarthy goes to New England, and if they have to start right away, their careers will be destroyed. Hmm. Uh, Broncos, stupid ass Sean Payton, whatever, whatever. They had a fire sale on a bunch of their guys. They're in cap hell. They're they're in stupid situation because of the Russ contract. Sure. Uh, the Raiders, I'm, I'm kind of high on the Raiders. I think that Antonio Pierce is going to get uh, do some damn good work uh, out there uh, in Vegas. So, sure. And, and the Giants. So, is any quarterback and their agent like really itching to land with the Giants where your wide receiver won? 
Well, so first off, if they draft a quarterback at six, they're not getting Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunes. So that, that's off the table. Uh, so your number one receiver is going to be Darius Slayton. Uh, and maybe Waller if he doesn't retire for the 17th time. Your offensive line is crap, and also since I spent number six on you or they traded up for you, uh, th- that's one less pick for an offensive lineman, so you're going to be under siege. Saquon is gone. The defense is bad. Dayball is under pressure, uh, and also uh, Joe Shane's probably going to get fired too, so next year you're going to have a new GM, a new head coach who didn't draft you, and also you got Daniel Jones, uh, four years, $160 million. But other than that, the Giants are a fantastic spot for a young quarterback. Please. Again, hey, Daniels, May, McCarthy, if any one of you jabronis wants to pull uh, an Elway Eli and force your way to the Vikings, come on, come on, come on, come on, man. But, uh, yeah, DJ gets it. He knows ball. He sees the forest through the trees, and he understands that the Vikings have the best situation for a rookie quarterback, have the ammunition to move up, and everything is just coming together and coagulating very nicely. You'd love to see it. It's fantastic, man. But your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah talks about the Vikings on his conference call. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.